Thank you, Anthony. That was beautiful. So let me say that whoever you are and wherever you may be on your own life spiritual journey, you are most definitely welcome here at the Sunderland Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. This is our last Sunday in January. Um, my first service, it was bright sunshine coming through the windows, and so I, I've heard everything from a nice afternoon to slush to snow. I don't know what we got coming, but um, hopefully... Uh, I know Anthony, they were joking around, maybe another Monday off of school for the poor guy. Um, so we'll see what happens tomorrow with the weather. But it's very nice to have all of you here with us today as we close out the month of January. And so with that said, let us now stand, if you are able, and turn to our opening hymn and the candle lighting, which is the hymn is found in blue number 426, Blessed Assurance. come together with our call to worship, uh, whether we are seated here in this beautiful sanctuary on FCAT at home or via Zoom with us live. However, we are here. We are here together in the spirit of Christ. Let us come together for worship. Jesus taught us, blessed are the poor in spirit. Contrary to human society, Jesus professed that the realm of God is theirs. The meek will inherit the earth, and the merciful will obtain mercy. These are aspirations calling us to do the work of our faith. All who hunger and thirst for righteousness are blessed. Jesus looks forward to the day when they will be filled. Blessed are the pure in heart and the peacemakers. 
these fearless saints of history and of our world will see the face of God. In coming together for our unison prayer, let the people beyond these walls hear our voices raised enthusiastically at this time of prayer and praise. For we call on the wise and holy God who has called us together as the sacred assembly of this church. Here in this community, we are refreshed by the hopes and promises of our faith and strengthened by them so that we do not settle for the world's substitutions. We are made confident because of our faith and this allows us to insist on the building of a better world where the Beatitudes are not only far off hopes, but goals that inspire how we live now. We seek to lift up the weak and the oppressed, to defy the world's illegitimate accumulation of riches and power, and to invite all people to share in the abundance of God's good creation. We want to accept Jesus' invitation to discipleship and service today. Amen. So now, I don't even know if your generation even knows what this is. You ever see a new, you, you see in a newspaper, thank God. I, huh? You read the newspaper? No, my picture's in the newspaper. Your picture's in the newspaper for what? Oh, I saw that for something King Arthur Bacon. Oh, that I didn't see. King Arthur Bacon? Yeah, it's for charity for the Greenfield Salvation Army. Oh, well, where was that in there? Uh, it was yesterday's paper. Yesterday's? Oh, this is the Boston paper. I'm sorry. I wish I had known you were in there. I could have used that, too. Well, a lot of kids don't even know what a newspaper is. Uh, you know, everybody used to have these delivered to the house. When I was a kid, you know, you delivered newspapers and all that. Now everything is online. But So, can you see the date there? So January 27th, this is last Sunday's newspaper, and anybody can you read what that full page um, title is for this section? <coughs> yep, Winter Arts Preview. So the Winter Arts Preview came out last Sunday. So after I finish church here, I go home and I have my breakfast and I read the paper and I finally get to this section and it's the end of January and they got a Winter Arts Preview. 
And I'm thinking, that's kind of strange to have a winter arts preview. I'm already starting, you know, February's small. Once you get into March, I'm already thinking spring, and they got a winter arts preview. And I look inside, anybody like ballet? So, so, you do ballet? Okay, well, this is the Boston Ballet. They got dates for March, April, and May. Over here, they've got some plays in Emerson at, at, what is it called, Arts Emerson. Again, March, April, and May. And I'm thinking, this seems to be late. This doesn't seem to be a preview anymore for winter. This seems already a preview for spring. And so the reason I'm talking about this preview is because we're going to hear in today's gospel something called the Beatitudes. And the first little word in Beatitudes is be and then attitudes. So Jesus is giving us a lesson about how we are supposed to be in this life and the attitudes that we have in life so that we can live a life we're supposed to if we want to follow Jesus and believe in Jesus. So be attitudes. So I think this paper, this preview for winter arts came out late. I think Jesus' beatitudes are right on time because sometimes we can almost think about religion as heaven, you know, waiting to see what Jesus is like in heaven. And I think what Jesus is doing with the B attitudes is he's saying that's too late to start thinking about God when, you know, you're thinking about heaven. B attitudes is about how you're supposed to live right here, right now. The kind of person we want to be right here, right now, if we believe in Jesus and we want to follow Jesus. We don't want to be late like a winter preview that comes out at the end of January. We want to even learn in Sunday school about how we are supposed to be and the attitudes we're supposed to have if we're really going to be a follower of Jesus. Okay, so let's not be late. Let's remember all those lessons we learn in church and in Sunday school, and let's try to live them. Have a great Sunday school class. And we have a treat today with our bell choir, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Thank you very much for that. So now it's our time for invitation to prayer, and you all have the yellow sheet in your bulletins, but before we get to that, let us continue to offer our prayers for the nation and people of Ukraine. And I really don't even know what the prayer is I should be offering. Uh, they're sending tanks to help Ukraine defend from a possible spring offensive from Russia, and I know that's necessity, but the idea of sending more and bigger weapons, it, I, I really don't know how to pray that prayer in church. Do we pray? 
that they succeed on the battlefield or do we pray for peace? I, I don't know how to do it. And that's when you just turn it over to God and hope that God can help heal this rift uh, from two peoples that are really more, so much more similar than they are different. So we offer our prayers still for Ukraine. We also continue to pray for our nation as we face the reality of persistent and institutional racism. And we also pray for all those who've been affected by COVID-19, RSV, and the flu. And um, I just heard this morning, I, I guess um, there was a shooting at the, uh, at the Holyoke Mall. The, um, and I, did I hear that, I, and I don't know if this is true or not, but did I hear that somebody actually got killed? Bystander. A bystander died from the shooting there? So I, I have, does anybody know a name? Yeah. Um, let us offer up um, that person, whoever that person is, uh, that they may uh, know uh, Jesus' embrace in, in heaven and that the family may somehow be able to deal with this tragedy. And we also pray for these random acts of violence that are just, um, again, just so senseless in our world. Um, I also want to offer a, a joy. Uh, Jen went downstairs, and, and Roman is, is way over there. We had a meeting this past um, Thursday, I think it was, and was it Thursday? Thursday was our, uh, and it was about um, helping, or uh, idea about helping grow the church. There was so much enthusiasm and energy on that Zoom call. And so I want to thank everybody, and, and Lisa for uh, convening us, uh, because that was, I left that, and I was kind of floating for the rest of the day. There were some really great ideas, and one of them that all of us can do, if, if in any way you're on social media, um, we are now going to be on, I guess, is it called Instagram? Yeah. And what was the other one? TikTok. Um, and we're, I think a lot of us maybe already are on Facebook, but I didn't realize the more that you, uh, you like what we post on any of those social media sites, and then also I guess the most important thing, if I get this right, is the comments. Um, so the more comments that Facebook sees, um, the higher they raise it up you know, when people do searches. And so if any of you uh, can help us in that way, just by going to our Facebook or eventually our Instagram and TikTok and just liking it or offering a comment, um, that helps us. But that energy that day was wonderful. And uh, so for all the people who are on that committee, thank you for that. And, and uh, let's see where that leads us. Um, does anybody ever have any joys, celebrations, concerns before we get to the yellow sheet? Yes. Thank you, Judy. That's absolutely right. Yes, Kathy. Just thank you to Julie for uh, spearheading our, our trial run for our takeout dinner last night. I have to say, it was delicious. It was. It really was. Yes. Mark. My daughter works for TikTok. Well, give me a hand with TikTok. Well, thank you very much, Mark. We might take you up on that. Thank you very much for the offer. Appreciate that. Yeah, you know, usually when I go to bed at night, I have a, a late night snack as I'm watching television. I had so much of that chicken um, with the biscuits, I didn't have a snack last night. So it was really, really good. Um, any other announcements from anybody? Yes. Uh, my friend Michael finally came home from Army boot camp. Huh? And I was training the uh, uh, combat med. A combat medic. All right. All right. Well, let's pray to keep him safe, too. Absolutely. All right. Any other prayers, joys, celebrations? Okay. Um, then let us turn to our yellow sheet. And since this is going to be out on FCAT eventually, uh, maybe by Wednesday or so, let's just remember that we're only saying first names. So let us pray for Alan, Alice, Antonia, and family. Art, Barbara, Bill, Bonnie, Carrie, Cheryl, Cindy, Denise, Evelyn, Frank, Grayson, Jeff, Jimmy, John, John, June, Kathy, Martha, Michelle, Mike, Pauline, Prue and Bart, Cheryl, Steve, Thelma, Tim, Vinny, Virginia, Richard, Wink, the Drake, Drake, Trembley family, 
victims of violence anywhere in the world, and those affected by natural disasters around the globe, and we pray for peace on earth. All-knowing God, whose saving power has come to us in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, grant that we may hear and speak the truth and do what is right so that our lives may bring blessings to the world and give examples for others to follow. Help us to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Help us to embody Jesus' beatitudes. Help us to help you build a better world. And we ask that you hear our prayers and joys and concerns of thanksgiving and petition. And we ask you to answer them so that it may strengthen our faith. So that we know that when we offer our prayers that they are heard, that you care about them, that they matter. And that will make us better at following your word. And all these things we ask as always in Jesus' name. Amen. And may we now turn inward for just a few moments in the middle of our public worship uh, to say those things to God that are best kept a little bit more quiet. So just a few moments of silence for prayer. And may we now share in the prayer that Jesus has shared with all of us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The prophet Micah has already taught us in our first reading that God is neither pleased with burnt offerings nor impressed by the size and the opulence of our gifts. Instead, God desires the full sincerity of our commitment of which giving is a tangible symbol. God calls us to live, as it said in the prophet, lives of mercy and of peacemaking, for which our offerings can help make a beginning. Because the example we set in church, as Irene started off with, this is a sacred place that sometimes we really don't understand or appreciate until we can't come here. But this is a sacred place, a sacred time, and a sacred community. And hopefully this gives us a chance to live the gospel, live the Beatitudes, and to go out in the world and offer a better example. And that's all possible because of the donations and the support that you make, whether it be through the pocket or, as Judy mentioned, even doing the simple things that have to be done all the time. However you support this church, we thank you for that, and we ask God to bless you. And we ask that offerings now will be accepted um, in church, but they can also be sent in uh, to our treasurer through the mail if you are watching us via Zoom or FCAT. But however you give, please know that it is very much appreciated.
Accept, O oh Lord, these gifts that we now place in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for each other. The prophet Micah said so succinctly and beautifully that what we are to do is to walk humbly with you, to love kindness, and to do justice. These gifts, we pray, may help this congregation do exactly that. The Beatitudes that we will soon hear, these contributions help us to do exactly that. So may God bless each of you for your generosity, whether it is in this plate or what you do for all of this church, that we can continue to be here. Whatever you do, thank you and God bless, and may God bless these gifts for his greater glory as we continue to serve him as best we can. In Jesus' name, amen. And our reflecting hymn this morning is Blue Hymnal number 492, Spirit of the Living God, and we are going to sing that two times through. Today's gospel is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, in the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then Jesus began to speak, and he taught them by saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the very children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. And in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who came before you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be accepted to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Thursday, I bet you already all know, is Groundhog Day. And the most famous groundhog is Punxsutawney Phil, who lives out in western Pennsylvania. And I don't know how it became equally, if not maybe even a little bit more famous, but there's also the Bill Murray movie, I love Bill Murray, Groundhog Day. 
And the phrase Groundhog Day is a part of our language because of that movie with Bill Murray. It came to mean monotonous, unpleasant, repetitive. I remember a friend and I, we used that phrase um, on the first day of a week-long youth retreat in the woods of Goshen. And this youth retreat would be year after year after year, literally, I think, maybe 20 years or more. And I really enjoyed those weeks. I really did. But I also, you know, wasn't a real big fan of the woods and sharing cabins. I usually had the 8- to 12-year-olds and sharing common bathrooms with 8- to 12-year-old boys. That, was, that wasn't on the top of my, you know, greatest things uh, of the whole year. So anyway, I, I loved my time with them, but I really also loved the end of that week as well. But as we were driving down, and I don't know if you've ever been uh, into the DAR State Forest where 4-H Camp Howe has their retreat up there, uh, but you go down a pretty long access road that takes you deeper and deeper into the woods, and as we would drive down that access road, I mean, it's been 51 weeks since we were there the previous summer, but as you were driving down that access road, it really felt like you'd never left. I mean, as you're going back down there, it's all coming back to you, and it's like it wasn't 51 weeks ago, it was like yesterday I came down this road and came into this camp, and you got that feeling that I never left and I could never leave, and it was our Groundhog Day story. Now, in that movie, Bill Murray portrays Phil Connors, and he's a cynical TV weatherman, and he's covering Groundhog Day in this you know, little town in western Pennsylvania, Punxsutawney. He is none too happy to be there. He has dreams of a, a bigger tomorrow. And then a blizzard forces him to spend another night, a blizzard that this, fight, that this weatherman who couldn't, you know, wants to go on to bigger and better, he didn't see the blizzard coming, but he has to spend another night and when he wakes up, and I bet you all know the story, it's February 2nd again. And then he wakes up, and it's February 2nd again, and again, and again. And he realizes that he's trapped in this time loop that he cannot escape. And Bill Murray's character becomes increasingly bizarre as he realizes that there's no consequences to whatever he does. So he indulges in all sorts of really stupid and dangerous and even suicidal activities. He's trying to break free of this time loop but he keeps waking up on February 2nd. And this is where that meaning of monotonous and unpleasant and repetitive, it enters into our English language because that was a pretty popular movie in the 1990s. Eventually, trapped inside February 2nd, he begins using his increasing knowledge of the day's events and of the town's residents to manipulate circumstances to his advantage because he wants to seduce his coworker. And you know what seduce means. So he only wants to seduce her, nothing more. But as he's learning more and more things so that he can kind of you know, get closer and closer to her so he can seduce her, he starts to really appreciate her for who she is. And slowly but surely, as in all these good fairy tales, he realizes that I love this woman. I don't want to just seduce her. I love this woman. And when love comes into the picture, as in all good fairy tales, he's free of February 2nd in that endless time loop. And there's the rub. Groundhog Day has come to mean monotonous, unpleasant, and repetitive. And it's kind of like those characters of Scrooge or the Grinch. You know, those two names mean miserable and mean. But, you know, because the main part of their story is about them being miserable and mean. But at the little last page of those stories, all of a sudden, they're transformed. And they actually are said to be better than the people around them. So... What do we remember, though? We don't remember the transformation. We remember all of those pages before that last page where they were miserable and mean. And the same thing happens with Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day is a similar event. For most of that movie, the character is bored by this unending day. And that's where that negative sense of the phrase comes into English. It's the way I used it, driving down that access road into Goshen. You know, it's just like we never left and we never could. But the movie ends with the message of transformation. Bill Murray's character comes out of it a better person, a decent person, a good person. So why go into all of this just because, you know, on Thursday, it's Groundhog Day? It's because of those pesky Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are all eight of those blessed R statements that, you know, they're really probably the most famous part of Jesus' most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. The Beatitudes are Jesus' reorientation of how we are to live in the world. They are the explanation of what it means to follow Jesus. They, they really kind of give flesh and blood to that phrase that we hear an awful lot of, 
but we really don't think about, I don't think. This is one of those historical phrases that most definitely goes back to Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said these words, blessed are those. And then he goes on for eight of them. And then he also says, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. We all heard that statement. We all know that statement, but that is transformative. That turns the world inside out and upside down. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. And Jesus in that one sentence is laying out his expectations. You believe in me? The first shall be last and the last shall be first. You want to believe? You want to follow me? If you believe me, you want to follow me? The first shall be last and the last shall be first. It really does turn everything upside down. And then he gives us these beatitudes to kind of give us an idea of what it means when we say the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And I bet they sound familiar. They, they've actually entered into our language. So this is what Jesus preaches as for the very first time, large crowds of people are gathered around him according to Matthew's gospel. And as they gather around, Jesus is popular. They're not coming just for miracles. They're sitting there on that hillside listening to Jesus. They want to hear what he has to say, and Jesus wants to make absolutely sure that they do just that, that they hear what he has to say and not what they think he should be saying. Because, you know, you can listen to someone, and if you think you know what they should be saying, you will hear that even if it's not being said. So Jesus lays out quite clearly in little short, memorable phrases the Beatitudes. And if you want to follow me, says Jesus, this is who you have to be. These are the attitudes you need to show. So we've heard the Beatitudes, I bet you, since you were their age and you were in Sunday school. Maybe you even had to memorize them back in your days in Sunday school. I know I had to. And even if they had become less familiar over the years, they still ring a bell. We still remember them a little bit. And Jesus preached them in a memorable way to help them stick. Because this is the meat of the gospel, the Beatitudes. Actually, you know, they are really familiar, but they're not supposed to be familiar. Because familiar means, you know, you can start hearing them and then you tune it out. Oh, I know what's coming next, and you tune it out. But Jesus makes them familiar so that we can hear them and listen to them and ponder them. So let's try to think about the Beatitudes in light of Groundhog Day. We may have been exposed to them, like I said, since Sunday school. I, I bet everybody here has been exposed to them since Sunday school. Or maybe you've heard them in church because we do it at least once a year. And even if you haven't heard them in church, I bet you've heard like blessed are the peacemakers or, or blessed are the meek and all of that. You, those phrases, they sound familiar. And here again on a nondescript January Sunday, those pesky beatitudes are back at us again. It's kind of like Groundhog Day's time loop. There's just no escaping them. There they are. And some may think that this is the very definition of monotonous and repetitive and unpleasant. Yeah, I've heard that. I remember that. You don't have to go over it all again. But maybe this time can be like the ending of Groundhog Day. The moment when they're repetitive gives us a chance to be transformed. Maybe hearing them this one more time will give us that chance for an aha moment. You know, when we really understand the upside-down world of Jesus, it makes sense. You know, look at the world outside of here. Somebody is out shopping at, in Holyoke and, and gets shot and killed because of ridiculous violence. Think about Ukraine. Ukrainians and Russians are so similar, and yet now we're sending more tanks over there so that, you know, somehow they can figure a way out of this on the battlefield by killing more of each other's mothers, sons, and I just, I just don't understand. And think about the person who went in to, that, to the mall in Holyoke and just started shooting on a Saturday afternoon. What is going on? Or think about the, the, the incident in Memphis where you know, the, the, those four policemen beat a suspect to death. And you know, I, I just hear all these things and I wonder what's going on out there in the world. How much more of that ridiculousness do we have to put up with before we realize that the upside down that Jesus is talking about in the Beatitudes, it really sets us upright, and this is nonsense. The world that we tolerate is the one that is messed up and screwed up and upside down, and the Beatitudes, they give us a chance to right the ship. They give us a chance to listen 
and to make sense out of the world. And it takes somebody that's going to have to do that, to invest in that. And that's why we come to these places, these sanctuaries, these oases, these places where we have a chance to maybe hear a different message and then maybe be inspired by what we see here to take it out there. Because if somebody is not the first one to go, who is going to bring the world the Beatitudes if we don't do it? You know, the, the French, they have a phrase that slipped into the English language because it's so common. You know, deja vu, something we've run into before. And so we learn deja vu. And so, you know, I don't know French, you know, I've never learned French. But, you know, we, we can say deja vu and it just kind of flows off the tongue because we run into these situations where, yeah, I, I've been here before. I've done that before. But there's a similar little phrase in French that didn't slip into English. It's je vu. And that just simply means... I've never seen it. And so this whole idea of this je vu is the opposite of deja vu. Deja vu we, is common, and we use it in English because it's, we need to. But those ideas of the spectacular, the once in a lifetime, the extraordinary, those aha moments, we don't talk about that all, much, all that much because they are those aha moments. May the Beatitudes today be one of those you know, je vu. May they be like a once in a lifetime. We've heard it. We've heard it over and over. Deja vu. But may today, may they sink in. May we go home and read Matthew 5. May we think about it and ponder it. Read, you know, that newspaper. Read your newspaper and then read Matthew 5. Newspaper, Matthew 5. And you tell me which is the better alternative. The world we've created or the world Jesus offers. We don't have to always be deja vu, we've been here. So one Sunday it's this shooting, another Sunday it's another shooting. We can change it, but we have to change by believing in the reality, the Beatitudes, that there can be something better. And that is my prayer today, that we really, for the first time, hear the Beatitudes and give Jesus a chance. And for this we pray in his most holy of names, amen. And if you are able, I invite you to please stand for our closing hymn, Red Hymnal number 272, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. <laughs> Thank you for coming out on this Sunday morning and uh, do hope that you have a blessed week ahead of you. And if we could now have our benediction and then we will conclude with our congregational response. So let us walk blamelessly before God as we seek to live righteously and to serve humbly as the prophet had said. Proclaim the truth of the gospel in word and in deed. Let us keep those beatitudes before us throughout our lives and may they be our inspiration, may they be our guide. 
Let us rejoice and be glad, for God offers us rich rewards in heaven for sure and here on earth when more and more of us invest in living the Beatitudes. From God, we will receive wisdom and power as we humbly accept the call to be co-creators with God of a better tomorrow. So filled with the blessings of God's promises as we gathered in worship, let us now go forth to love and serve the Lord in all that we do among all whom we may meet. Amen.